full the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you, a beacon of light emerges from deep within you. The door stands silent. Satisfied, detective? Try again. Just like that, you hear a click, then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. Ahoy! Come on in! You can't be serious. to say anything more about him. You cannot make out any of his details, but you do feel the overwhelming presence of capital. The feeling causes all the hairs on your body to stand at attention, like soldiers preparing for review. Some things amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended, distorted, an echo. Trying to visualize the physics at play is liable to give you an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard. In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter. Welcome. Come in. Make yourself at home. Sorry, I'm not better able to receive you. I wasn't expecting visitors today. You can't hear him exactly, yet you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange. An overwhelming hum covers everything. Voice doesn't escape from him. Now, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Who am I? <laughs> oh... I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Anyhow, my name is Rustam Diodore, investor, license holder, and extremely high net worth individual. And you are? Mr. Diodore, I am Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi of the RCM, and this is my partner. Pleasure to meet you, Harrier Dubois. I must admit, the name suits you very well. Oh lord, not this again. Oh, nothing. It's just that we've got this murder to solve, and yet you go around asking everyone about money. And every time I ask, are you sure this is related to the case, you say, sure, Kim, I think it is. And yet, it never seems to get us any closer to solving the case. <laughs> it's quite alright. I'm used to the question by now. To be blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself was an extremely high net worth individual back in Graz. All I did was take her fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailing boats, bad choices, and unsupervised state policy. And blow. Actually, at the level this guy is, it takes several generations to do that, but all right. I gotta tell you, at first, being rich is a lot of work. You've got to work hard because everything's so darn expensive. You know, prices increase exponentially at this income level. But then, once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out ahead no matter what. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, but doesn't that take all the fun out of it? And I tell them, not really. Sure, and they benefit when I buy things to stimulate the economy. 
Do you know how many jobs it takes to build and maintain a racing yacht? Dozens, at least. Of course, in the future it will all be automated. But my point is this. Every man gets what he earns. It's the height of tyranny to take that from him. Capital makes one speechless, does it not? Blinds like the sun that rises from beyond the horizon after a gloomy winter. Hey, hey, all this talk about money has made you lose the thread. What is going on with the light in this place? That's what you need to ask him about. What do you mean? Are you talking about my chin? Oh, that's what you mean. Yes, I've heard of this effect, though I've never witnessed it myself, of course. It has something to do with our vice visaman coefficient. The vice visaman coefficient is a ratio designed to reflect the difference in net worth between individuals. When the coefficient is close to one, or 100%, it means one person possesses all the net worth. Among that group of individuals, it's been observed that when the Weiss Weisman coefficient reaches about 0.96 or so, the laws of physics begin to bend around the high net worth individual. Among other things, but calm down, I am but a lowly single digit billionaire. No, not really. <laughs> there are actually quite many digits. I see nothing of the sort. To be frank, all I see is a gentleman who is unusually well dressed for Martinez in a cargo container, which I admit is odd. Yes, I imagine that does look strange to you. My container? Traveling. This is a great way to get around. It's fun, it's safe, and it gives me lots of time to think. By the way, let me now ask you a question. Where are we exactly? In the very, very early days of colonizing this archipelago, the Kingdom of Serenes, a precursor of a modern Sir Leclerc, used to own the city of Revachon, an obscure detail in the bigger picture, but still worth dropping. Ah, a fellow history buff. I myself am currently reading up on Franco-Nigerian era trains. Very interesting stuff. It's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. One of the downsides of being an extremely high net worth individual is that mobs of low net worth individuals are constantly banding together to ask for money. There simply aren't enough hours a day to hand out all the handouts. It's like feeding seagulls. They are always more and they never seem to do anything interesting with it. Except more seagulls. Spending money is a matter of desire. I'm sure you agree. I don't have the desire for spending it like that. Smart, no? It also provides a means to hide from all the targeted advertising we extremely high net worth individuals are constantly subjected to. Luxury yachts, high fidelity portable radio systems, pale proof outerwear and so on. It just gets a bit middle class after a while. A bit bourgeois. What? No, I didn't say that at all. Being rich is great. Uh, just don't tell anyone I told you that. Could you please stop asking people for money? It does not reflect well on the RCM, and to be perfectly frank, we can't afford to look worse than we already do. It's perfectly all right. Based on your appearance, I can tell I'm dealing with a smart man. As you may know, us high net worth individuals do not have a lot of cash on hand. Investments and liquidity are enemies of one another. I think I only have coins for coffee machines. Here is 3 real. How much can you get for this?
That's the idea, my friend. You've got to work for the rest. Maybe you can make that money grow. Come up with an investment plan. How's that sound? If business planning were really your strong suit, you probably wouldn't be a cop. Go on. I'm ready. Hold on. Have we met before? No. On second thought, it couldn't have been you. Your idea reminds me of a group of young men who came to me a long time ago, calling themselves Fortress Accident. The name should have been a red flag. They pitched me and a handful of other investors on an idea for a role-playing game that would, in their words, change the world. <laughs> well, at first everything was rosy. The ideas were solid, but they were lacking in... How do I put it? They lacked the will to get things done. As their financial situation became more desperate, their ideas devolved from realistic to absolute insanity. We lost all of our money. High art types never deliver. They are only good for peddling Wilkins or whatever creeps they come up with. I guess the inordinate amount of time they put into drawing mythical creatures did not generate a return on investment. Nobody knows for sure, but the place can't be pretty. Sadly, when we got there, it was too late. The concept had run out of steam, only dust remained. What I want to tell you is this. It's a very bad idea. Dead in the water. You seem like a reasonable man, but that is not a reasonable plan. Absolutely not. Stop embarrassing yourself. Pop a magnesium and calm down. Welcome back, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Deploying high concept buzzword generator. All systems functional. Ready to engage in three, two, one. It's time to disrupt the future. You've got to stay lean, innovative, and focus on what matters most, the children. A youth center, huh? What kind of youth center? A place to train, buff kids. Come on, tell him what he wants to hear. Brilliant. Without children, who'll be there to buy stuff in the future? When life closes a door, it opens a window, yes? What's the expected return on this? You're deep into ultra-liberal territory now. Good work. Very impressive. You've got a natural eye for unusual investment opportunities. I don't normally do this without a formal pitch deck, but to hell with it. What's the point of being rich if you have to follow all the rules? Here's the round of seed funding. This should be enough to prove out the concept and get things off the ground. Cha-ching! What'll it be? Speed? Vodka? Cigarettes? Remember, it's not a handout. It's an investment, and I expect to see returns. The lieutenant stands there, dumbfounded. His mouth opens slightly, then closes again. I'm not unimpressed. Let's leave it at that. Now, was there anything else I could help you gentlemen with? Mr. Dubois, every worker, member of the board, how can I help you today? Mega rich light bending guy? Oh my god, how did that get in there?
Damn it to hell, Harry. I specifically told my guys to check all the containers for mega rich light bending guys. Honestly, Harry, we might be moving all kinds of suspicious things through this harbour, but I won't be caught transporting the light bending mega rich. I have a reputation to protect. You're a fucking idiot, Harry. I love it. Thank you for sharing this deep, idiotic part of yourself with me. A hallucinating market liberal. I love it. So poetic. <laughs> I shudder to think what you're going to tell me next, Harry. Not for one second did he believe there's an actual mega-rich person somewhere in his container town. 